Good morning. Welcome to day 20, two thirds of the way. Love, peace, and joy, devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, according to St. Gertrude. <coughs> Get my computer set up so everyone can see everything. All right. Chris, can you start us off in prayer? Yep. In the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O sacred heart of Jesus, teach me to be meek and humble of heart like thee. Teach me perfect self-forgetfulness. Teach me what I must do to arrive at the purity of thy love. Thou knowest my weakness, but thou canst do all. Accomplish in me thy holy will. Consume me by the fire of thy love. Is not that, O oh Jesus, the office and desire of thy heart? And dost not thou deserve that there should be souls who know and love thee, whilst there are so many who outrage and offend thee? Amen. 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 Sorry, 20th day, the victim of the heart of Jesus, according to St. Gertrude. Gertrude, the suffering victim, my heart finds such pleasure in Gertrude, said our Lord to a holy soul, that it often happens to me when I am off offended by others to seek my rest in her by afflicting her with some suffering of body or mind. She accepts these trials in union with my passion with so much gratitude and bears them with so much patience and humility that she appeases me at once and forces me to forgive innumerable sinners for love of her. Gertrude, Eucharistic victim, Jesus one day taught her by those words of Isaiah, Arise, put on thy strength, O Zion. The advantage of the church militant derives from devotion of the elect, insomuch that when a loving soul turns with all her heart to God, with the full desire to atone, if she were able for the wrongs by which men injure the honor of our Lord and endeavors to appease him by her ardent prayers and respectful caresses. <clears throat> Gertrude, victim of her. desires, on the festival of exaltation of the Holy Cross, during the elevation of the chalice, Gertrude offering to our Lord sufferings of the community. He said to her, I will drink, yes, I will drink this chalice, which the ardor of your desire has filled with so much sweetness for me. I will drink it as often as you present it to me, until you have, as it were, intoxicated me with it, in order to render me favorable to your prayers. And how, answered she, O oh Lord, can we offer it to thee as often, replied Jesus, as you form in your heart the desire to suffer all that one can suffer till the day of judgment. Then he taught her in what words to express this desire. Lord, for thy greater glory, make my will agree with my words. I would that all of the sufferings of desire ever experience in thy love by any human heart from the beginning of the world till the end may accumulate in my heart and remain there till the day of my death in order that these desires may give thee to find a more ple pleasing retreat in my heart and make thee amends for the ingratitude of men. Consideration. Love shows itself by sacrifice and sacrifice offered up in the heart of Jesus, exhales the order, odor of sweetness, not only for God who receives it, but for us who offer it and for those who assist thereat. Thus, the life of sacrifice, in other words, the life of a victim, united to the heart of Jesus is a life of real sweetness and in the truest sense, a life of love, joy, and peace. May we understand this and by practice and experience, see and enjoy it. Taste and see how sweet it is.
A victim may be considered in three different ways. As suffering, this regards herself and is personal. As a substitute for others, and in prayer and all religious acts, this regards God. <clears throat> With respect to suffering, St. Gertrude seems to have adhered to the rule of her order, which was sufficiently severe, and to the great rule of abandonment to providence. The rule of St. Benedict supplied her with enough fasts, vigils, labors, and diverse, diverse works of penance to keep alive the fire of her sacrifice. And all, the all-wise and loving care of Jesus added to these. Besides the mortifications to which she was drawn by the attractions of grace, sickness, labors, and other trials, which serve to intensify its flame. The saint found a means of supplying for whatever might be wanting, and of obtaining before God the merit of all that those saints who endured the most have suffered. By the dispositions indicated above, desire, union, and abandonment, all these, with regard to suffering, she had been taught by the heart of Jesus. Which of us could not learn from her the signs of the victim of the sacred heart, appropriate these sentiments, and thus excite ourselves to rival, in some degree, the most ardent lovers of the cross? With regard to substitution, taking the place of another, we see by passages cited above that Gertrude was always at the free disposal of our Lord, to immolate herself in the place of others and thus obtain their pardon. More frequently, indeed, he seems to have been satisfied with rather ordinary sufferings joined to extraordinary dispositions by which her merit was increased. And applying to her the rule of the gospel, with what measure you met, it shall be measured to you again, Matthew 7, 1. Even as Gertrude suffered in the place of others, Jesus deemed it him to become with his saints substitutes for her so that she was able to appropriate his and their sufferings and if she had as it were endured them herself and thus her most trivial plans gained an incom incomparable satisfactory value for herself and for others here again could not any of us try to do as she did there is nothing sad, nothing to dismay us, if not the life of a victim thus understood, even attractive, I'm sorry, is not the life of a victim thus understood, even attractive, full of grace and full of salvation. Finally, with regard to religious acts, Gertrude was most, especially the victim of the heart of Jesus, who himself was the perfect worshiper of his father. She lived with him a truly religious life. Praise, thanksgiving, prayer, desire, atonement, worship, the divine office. Such were her whole occupations. <clears throat> he also fulfilled in an admirable manner the four aims of a victim's life. Adoration, thanksgiving, reparation, impetration. These four duties accomplished in union with the heart of Jesus abandoned, I mean, I'm sorry, absorbed her entire life. It seems, however, that thanksgiving and supplication were its dominant characteristics because Gertrude was a Eucharistic soul and the life of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus manifests itself principally by thanksgiving and by prayer. We may also distinguish four phases in the victim's life. Oblation, by which it is offered to God, <laughs> Immolate, immolation is sacrifice, combustion by which it is purified, transformed, and sanctified, and communion by which God unites it to himself and makes use of it to unite himself to men. These four phases are seen in the life of St. Gertrude as they are in our Lord, but it may be said that the last, communion, has the greatest share <laughs> as it has in the life of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Her acts of oblation and immolation are accomplished with the utmost generosity. Her transformation in the fire of divine love 
becomes continually more and more perfect. But with communion that held the, but it is, but it was communion that held the first place, communion with Jesus by unity of heart and life, with the saints by the most intimate charity, communion with souls by the most devoted zeal. Finally, the life of a victim may be considered in two different ways, as the victim of Calvary and the Eucharistic victim. The victim of the Sacred Heart ought, it seems, to adopt the second of these forms, more particularly as our Lord has manifested his divine heart to us, especially in the divine Eucharist, under the form of his sacramental life, as if he would tell us that this is the more permanent, more ordinary state, and the one to which he would call the Eucharistic soul, more particularly in these last stages of the world, when the church seems to expect again an era of consolation and a wide effusion of the Eucharistic spirit. It is especially the Eucharistic victim that becomes manifest in the life of St. Gertrude, and she is well able to teach us that if in the victim of Calvary, the virtue of patience is most apparent. Humility is more characteristic of victim of the blessed Eucharist. If the victim of Calvary displays more generosity, that of the Eucharist is more distinguished by the spirit of abandonment. If the former intimates more perfectly the suffering life of our Redeemer, the latter is more conformed to the life of Jesus in the Holy Tabernacle, a life of praise, prayer, and love. Such more especially was the life of St. Gertrude, and for this reason, she seems to be more accessible as a model to us and to lead us in this way more sweetly and surely to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Practical conclusion, the various points we have just explained offered of themselves significant matter for practice. That wasn't an easy read. It wasn't. It seemed like it was a little, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of, yeah, deep. And I was really hit by the very beginning and it's just like, my heart signs find such pleasure that it often, when I'm offended by others, I seek my rest in her by afflicting her with some sufferings of body or mind. I mean, that sounds like Job. I mean, I, I mean, I have to think about this. He loves her so much that he's going and he's hurt. My heart finds such pleasure in her that when I'm offended by others to seek my rest in her by afflicting her with some sufferings of body or mind. That is so unfair, right? For some, for one person to suffer all the sins of the world. Yeah. I mean, if, if you look at it, I mean, it's like, what? It's like, right. Oh. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know that that's, that's what Christ did for us. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's hurt so bad that, let's see, he's so offended by others that he gives her those those trials to take on so that he isn't hurt as bad well and to have her realize how badly i guess it it offends him but oh my word wow that is that's a lot to take on one person you see what i'm saying especially our world now who yeah she accepts these trials Good. in union with my passion with so much gratitude and bears them with patience and humility So it's like she accepts it. She accepts those that that the Lord gives her. Um, to emulate what he has done for us. Okay. He's sacrificing himself on the cross. She likewise is accepting of being that victim or that 
going through the same pains as the Lord is. So likening herself. I don't know. That's And I, I guess in my head, carrying, I, carrying in his pain and his suffering. I right. Guess. Yeah. Yeah. In my head, I understand that, but in my heart, I look at, gosh, that's is, a lot. Is that something that I would be willing to do? <laughs> well, that's a lot to take yeah. on. That is, that, is a, that is a big ask, right? Right. Like, oh my God. And she bears them with patience and humility, but because of that, she force he she forces God to forgive innumerable sinners for the love of her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I guess that's what that's I mean. Wow. I guess that's a total surrender that we have to take. If if we take on those kind of things in reparation for other sinners, I guess our offering it to God is what helps us keep taking on this pain and trials. And oh my Lord, well, I'm willing to do that for, especially for my children, my Lord. I, yeah. Mm, I look back and I go, what have I done wrong? Although it's like, oh my God, it, it feels, I mean, I, I question myself and I'm going, I thought I did all my best to make sure that they, but they make those choices for themselves. You, know? you, you can raise your children the I, best that you can. And they just like oh, us, they still have free will. Yes. Nope. Yes, absolutely. Like, wow. See, I have one that I have three kids. One of them is on fire for the Lord. One of them is lukewarm. And one of them is just blasted cold and ice and has nothing to do with the church. Yeah, and they yeah. were all raised the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have two. And one is one is a lukewarm, but the other one has totally just abandoned all that. And it's like, oh, my goodness. Yep. The pain it causes us. Imagine oh. the pain it causes the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And then I liked again how they tied it back into desire, union, and abandonment. Yeah. Where this all start. I mean, from the very beginning. Right. They've been saying desire, union, and abandonment. Yeah. Mm. It sure puts a whole new spin on suffering, though. Yes, absolutely. That we have no idea why the Lord is giving us this suffering. You know, maybe it is to save the souls of others. We just don't know. We just, yeah, we just are not aware that we are to just offer it up and just keep offering it up back to him and everything and reparation for others. For others, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's a heavy burden he's asking us to carry. Yep. Guess it's a good thing we're not carrying it alone, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> short read but very impactful right yeah, man all right well take that through your day and mull and pray over that one yeah i know huh? i could take lifetime to fully understand so all right, guys, have a great okay. Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.